are massive tax cuts that are growing paychecks all over our country. They're creating jobs and expanding the American dream, just like we said would happen. That's the way it's happened. President Trump touting the positive impact of the GOP tax reform passed by Congress last December. That was yesterday in Washington. The commander in chief was joined in the Rose Garden by working Americans who say they have benefited personally and professionally from the overhaul. Joining me now is Republican Tennessee Congressman David Kustoff. Congressman, it's great to see you. What's your take on the messaging? Because now it is Republicans needing to remind the American people, you're actually getting to keep more of the money that you earned. That's exactly right. And, you know, when I'm back home in West Tennessee, I hear that all the time uh, from real people. Uh, I was with one of our small employers uh, in early February, right when, the, right when the tax cuts started to go into effect with the new IRS schedules. And the employer told me, I don't know, that he had eight or ten employees they get paid each and every week and on average they were getting an additional fifteen to twenty dollars in their paycheck per pay period per week so if somebody's getting an additional twenty dollars per week that's over a thousand dollars a year and that i don't mean to be melodramatic that can be life-changing for people it, it's substantial and you know you report the markets every day i think that last year the markets anticipated what we were going to do with tax reform and since we passed it just a few days before Christmas, mm -hmm. uh, the economy is is substantially better than it was during the Obama years. Now, even the CBO report we got out earlier this week, Congressman, says that the economy is going to grow at 3.3 percent. This year, you include next year. It's the fastest growth since 2005. But I want to bring in Rachel Campos Duffy here because, again, her husband is uh, one of your colleagues, uh, Congressman Sean Duffy. It's important for people running for re-election come in November to remind the American people yeah. this is why you're keeping more of your own money and not one single Democrat voted for this. They would right. rather spend your money than let you spend it. Right. It's definitely a tactic of the Democrats to talk about tweets and, you know, purported chaos in the White House and Stormy Daniels. What they don't want to talk about is this economy and the fact that the, uh, as you mentioned, the Democrats didn't get, not even one person voted for that. Um, so the Republicans really get to own this economy, and it's good news for them. They need to remind people, they need to remind young people, by the way, um, who are very amenable to socialism and, and, and uh, you know, say they're not afraid of it, and, and if you pull them, they like it. Uh, you know, it is the, it is an opportunity for Republicans to start to educate young people on capitalism, on free enterprise on reminding them of all the jobs they didn't have during the Obama era and that there are 6.3 million new jobs um, thanks to the tax cuts and deregulation and everything the Republicans have done in just one year. I, I want to, I want to, speaking of one of the loudest voices in, um, from the opposition, from the Democrats, let's talk about the budget outlook and House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi, who is the wealthiest woman in Congress, <laughs> borrowed sentiments from civil rights leader Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to criticize the proposed balanced budget legislation. Listen to this, Congressman. I want your reaction. I'm reminded in the course of the debate on the tax bill and on the budget and now the so-called balanced budget amendment of Reverend King's words, God never intended for any group of people to live in superfluous, inordinate wealth while others live in abject, deadening poverty. Can somebody hand uh, Nancy Pelosi a mirror, maybe? <laughs> Pelosi has been under fire for her comments about the tax plan because those $2,000 bonuses that literally millions of people got, they're just crumbs. It's yeah. pathetic. Congressman, the House failed to pass the balanced budget amendment yesterday. What's next? Well, it's, it's a real shame. It, you know, it, it passed, but it failed. It did get more votes than it needed to. Uh, it got more, vote, more yes votes than no votes, but it needed a two-thirds vote. And to roll it back just, if I can, uh, we all know that Washington has a spending problem. I, you know, at home, you, you don't spend more than you take in. My home state of Tennessee, which is probably one of the most well-balanced uh, states in the nation, L live within its means, great bond rating. It does it because uh, constitutionally, Tennessee cannot spend more than it takes in. It's a 
again, a very well managed state financially. We need to do that in Washington. And this, because Washington has a spending problem, this would have given the directive that, that Washington can't spend more than it takes in. Uh, and it got very few Democrat votes. My sense of it is, and especially after listening uh, to the clip that you just played from, from Leader Pelosi, is that uh, she told her Democrats, I'm sure there's some Democrats that wanted to vote for it, mm -hmm. but when your leadership tells you you can't vote for it, uh, she put her thumb down, and I think that's, that's wrong. We right. need it here, and it, it would have been good to have passed it and have gone to the Senate. Well, Michael Balboni, it is high comedy that the Democrats now have gotten religion about the debt and deficits. With that editorial that was in the Washington Post saying it's the tax cuts that are driving up the deficit and it's not entitlements. And now, there were, where were they when the national debt doubled under President Obama and they would spend money on anything and everything and all, all of a sudden they learned how to balance a checkbook in the last year? So, politically speaking, as the Congressman knows, you know, th this debate has shifted and we, the Republicans have allowed the, the shift and they got to bring it back. We're talking about tax cuts. We're not talking about tax increases. For years and years and years, it would be, the fear was there was going to be a tax increase. It's not. So let's talk about how this is going to affect the American economy. What do we see? We see the evidence. The evidence. The economy is roaring. And so you can say that this is driving deficit in projections in years to come. But that assumes that we continue along the same path of the spending ridiculousness that we've been doing for years in Washington, D.C. We can adjust this. We can't get into the narrative that tax cuts are bad. They're not. Right, and that's, that's going to be the message. Real quick, Mike. You're not going to win on that. You know, the thing I'll point out on the balanced budget issue, bond markets don't care. Bond markets are not caring. Bond vigilantes are, have been losing for a long time. Eventually, it should matter. It hasn't mattered. You know, we can sit around and it's going to be like waiting bond for the vigi Bond vigilantes are people who are saying that interest rates, longer term interest rates, and yes. the rate that the U.S. pays to borrow is going to go through the roof. That has not been a, a winning sudden. philosophy, is my point. No, not for a very long time. Congressman, it was good to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. Congressman David Kostoff, take care. Thank you.